television division viewers, this is the program that you've been hollering about. This is the program that upset that devil that was in you. You know it as the truth of God. The program that your father hate and your mother don't like and your pastor curse out and the members go on YouTube and fuss about. This is that program that has so many people now having their own YouTube space, their own YouTube channel, talking about the truth of God message all around this world. This is that program. And I thank God for it. Viewers in the churches of our Lord Jesus Christ around the world that is not here, and even my enemies, I want to keep you updated with what's going on too so you can stay on the, the, your laptop and continue to talk about it. I find it interesting. You know, if you watch a movie and you don't like it, you turn to something else, or if it come back again, you, you make your business not to watch it. <laughs> but it's something about this program that have millions admitting they hate it, they can't stand it. They don't like us. And they are on every message that come on social media. There's something about it that catches their attention. Really, I would be surprised you probably don't know why you constantly come back. But uh, if you don't know, there's something in you that's familiar with what I'm preaching. You know, Jesus came to the man possessed by the devil. And uh, the devil cried out to the man and asked him, why have you come to torment me before that? He told him, you're holding your peace. Be quiet. Come out of him. The devil came out and went into the swine and the swine drowned. Then there was a man named Sceva in the days of the apostle Paul. And the devil spoke out clearly and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? That's the explanation why Satan followers keep logging on. Jesus, the devil know. And the truth of God, the devil know. But who are you? Your religion must be mighty weak for all these religions to band together to attack one church. That shows you the power of God's word. Doesn't it? Now I want to say this before I forget to the gentleman that took the excerpt of our closing year message when I was talking about wigs and jewelry and makeup and how women that wear this stuff go to churches and look like hoes. I didn't stutter. And uh, they took about two or three minutes of that clip and somebody put it on Instagram. Now I know undoubtedly you thought you was hurting the church. But I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's give the devil a hand. Let's give the devil a hand. Glory to God. Wonderful. Amen. I can't thank you enough. Glory to God. Now you may think I'm crazy for thanking you. You intended bad. But God worked it for our good. You that's on the hip hop network and it's still on the hip hop network. It became the number one topic in America on the hip hop network. News outlets around the world took that clip. We were on the front pages of the two largest and the most popular newspapers in Jamaica. It was on front page on the star and on the front page of the gleaner. So to you that put this up, I can't even count the amount of radio stations and television stations that have been reaching out to us for interviews in America and out of America because they had never heard no one call a spade a spade. <laughs> now, some of you were offended and didn't like what I said and didn't like the way I said it. 
But let me say this to you. If you want sugar, don't you watch this program. If you want your soul played with, don't watch this. If you don't fear God and don't care nothing about the word, don't watch this. Watch TD Snakes, Freffler O'Penny, or Joel Austin, or watch your pastor. See, God made me a pit bull preacher. And when God makes a preacher, God makes him bold, uncompromising. I am unapologetic when it comes to that word. So you help the church. I mean, people, more souls came in as a result of a three-minute clip. Over seven million hits off a three-million clip. I was in Atlanta, Georgia last week. Fifty souls went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more preachers came in, one minister and one pastor from another church. A pastor left a false church down in Atlanta called Lucas Temple. Don't believe in speaking in tongue that the Spirit of God give utterance and then they say they have the Holy Ghost. So last week in Atlanta, 50 went down. The week before that, we were in Monroe, Louisiana. 49 went down in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, think of it. In two weeks' time, 99 souls went down in water in two weeks. So, the truth of God, believers, we don't care who don't believe this is of God. Glory to God, our God is faithful. When I was in Monroe, Louisiana, uh, when, um, when they introduced us to speak, I wasn't up a good minute or two before a gentleman's hand went up. I said, yes, sir, can I help you? He said, I came to debate you. I said, are you a preacher? Somebody said, no, I'm not a preacher, but I came to debate you. He said, you got live cameras? Are the cameras here? He wanted attention so bad. So I told him, no. I said, I'm going to preach the word of God. I, I'll deal with you later. He was surprised. He said, well, I came all right from Chicago. I said, that's not my problem. He kept throwing his hand up and interrupting the service. I said, look, just a minute. Or if you think by any means that you can come in first church and think you're going to shut service down so we can accommodate you, you're in the wrong place. So eventually he got up and went out. Now, I disagree with a lot of men, but I am not going to go inside your temple or church and interrupt you like I have no type of home training. If I disagree with you, I will bring my grievance respectfully and orderly. I'm not going to interrupt your teaching. I'm not going to do that. So the gentleman was highly upset because he didn't get the attention he wanted. Instantly he asked, you got the cameras rolling? Is it live? If we did have cameras, I would have told them to turn them off because he wore them too bad. This is not about attention. This is about God. That's what this is all about, God. So that excerpt is still going around the world, and to you that wrote us cussing me out, I thank you. To you that called me MF, SOBs, HRs, FX, ABCDs, and EFGs, and you that threw out your elemental P's and some QRST and a whole lot of UVW's. I thank you. My enemies, I'm so happy for you. As a result of the popularity of that, a lot of men feel as though they can capitalize off our name. So you go on YouTube now, all type of fellas up there. With our name. And sometimes they are pasting my name on the video and it's not me. One video I pulled up, they said, Pastor Jen is doing something. And then all you see was someone had a phone camera on a Bible verse and some Baptist preacher hollering in the background. Another video, someone said, Pastor Jen is preaching against something and a woman preacher came on. Hebrew Israelites took several excerpts. Talk about us. I want to thank all of my enemies. Because when the smoke clear, glory to God, the word won't change. As you know, we were on Fox Radio, the same network that owned Fox Television. And uh, <laughs> the gentleman that interviewed me, and there was, he was on one side, and his assistant was on another, and I was sitting in the middle. And Ron Skaleski was in the corner with his camera, and 
Brother Shade was to my right, and Huey was in front of me with his camera, you know, documenting everything. And I guess the host felt as though if they gang up on me or be disrespectful, they can make me angry. And I guess they thought that I would just get out of hand. But I'm used to being a sheep among wolves. I mean, I've been interviewed many a time. I know how it goes. They try to work on you to make you angry with sarcasm. But what the listeners couldn't see was Fox was not prepared for the influx of positive calls. They actually thought that everyone would call in, would be against it. So what y'all didn't see on the radio, all these positive calls was coming in. So when it went to commercial break, the male host said, look, go to the phones. We got to find someone that disagree with them. <laughs> so on the Fox network, they played the interview and then they played just that one woman who called in disagreeing on the Fox network. But a good thing that our cameras was there so people can see everything that took place. So we are, we are grateful what God is doing for the truth of God family the world over. Hundreds are coming in moreover. That message alone, that clip, have made people go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, when I was in Monroe, Louisiana, we baptized 30 the first night. And when some of the ones got a chance to talk to me, they were talking about that clip. And just so happened, one of the gentlemen came from it was either Houston, Texas or El Paso, Texas. Gave his testimony. He was a Hebrew Israelite. He said, Pastor Jennings, I was out there. They had me out there ready to fight every white person that walked by. He said, I was cussing everybody out in the name of Jesus. He said, I was ready to kill you. He said, but something in me felt as though something was wrong because in my mind I was thinking, how can I be out here just cussing these people out and then trying to tell them at Jesus, about Jesus? And then ready to do violence to them. He said, so I was on my laptop. And you came up. He said, brother, when you came up, that changed my whole life. He said, you see, I'm bald now. The word of God took all the dreadlocks out of his hair. It removed it. He went down in water. In the name of Jesus Christ. So... It doesn't matter how stubborn you are, how rebellious you are, how uh, wicked you are. The word of God will straighten you out. There's some other fella who said he got some little sight. He said, I never heard of this Geno Jennings fella, but everybody talking to him. So his topic was an in-depth look at Geno Jennings. And he have about 40 pictures of me on YouTube, taken from various websites. And all he did for the whole time was complain about my bow tie. I mean, he, he, he sound, he don't sound too manly. He said, look at his bow tie. I mean, I don't like his bow tie. Look at his suit. Then he said, listen to his voice. He said, that's not his real voice. It, 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 it's some type of um, computer sound he, he done to his voice. No, that's the authority of God in my voice. There ain't no computers here. There ain't no computers here. Jesus said, it is not you. That's speaking, but it's the voice, hallelujah, of my father. Glory to God that speaketh in you. So when he heard my voice, he said, it ain't no man walking around here with a natural voice like that. Here's one. This is the voice that God gave me. And God be my help, I'm going to trouble your hell-deserving soul. All right, we got some letters to get out the way and... We'll pick up some more tomorrow because I have some celebrity devils to take on tomorrow. Amen. I want to deal with some celebrity devils on tomorrow, but we're going to spar tonight. Come on, Dan. Let's get what letters we have and I answer what we can. And then we'll dive into the Bible and deal with this, how God people should and should not look. I want to deal with this in more detail. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to deal with this in a manner that I never did over the air. Amen. All right. Come on, Dan, the man. Let's get busy. All right, this letter says, uh, testimony. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. 
I want to start off by saying I am so grateful for the Truth of God ministry, and I am very grateful for the true teaching of God's Word by Pastor Gino Jennings. I have never heard anyone preach the truth the way Pastor Jennings does throughout my entire spiritual journey. I was introduced to the Catholic faith during my youth because my grandmother was a member. I also became a member of a Baptist church as well as a Pentecostal church as an adult. At the Pentecostal church, I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When I watched the YouTube video of Pastor Jennings, I learned that I was baptized incorrectly. Thank God for that. I decided to get baptized again and was baptized again by Minister Abraham on March 25th, the year 2018. Wonderful. Amen. Mm -hmm. because, because I wanted to make sure I was baptized correctly. Mm -hmm. Through the Truth of God Ministries, I have learned that we should live in holiness as Jesus Christ did when he was here on earth. I also learned that women should not cover their heads. Women should cover their heads, beg your pardon, when they are not in the comfort of their home or absent from their husband and should not wear pants, makeup, or embellishments in brackets of the jewelry on our body. They're learning, aren't they? Amen. All right. I felt convicted, repented of my sins, and began to clean out my makeup kits, wardrobe closets, pants and inappropriate dresses, she says, replaced my pants with dresses, turned away from bad habits. I completely stopped drinking hard liquor, smoking marijuana. Oh. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Isn't it wonderful what God is doing? Yeah. Come on, brother. Completely stopped drinking hard liquor, smoking marijuana, stealing from God, by not paying my tithes, and began to change the way I think and live day by day. I am still a work in progress, so please pray for me and my family, family strength in the Lord Jesus Christ, as, I'm, as I continue to pursue the gift of the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues. She says, Amen. Thanks for all you do to set the record straight by preaching the truth of God's word. And she gives her name, and but we don't know where she's from. All right. Thank God for that. Wonderful letter. All right, next letter. This letter says, message, greetings, a Facebook friend of mine about three months ago sent me a clip of a message in which you were talking about, in which you were talking about how the sisters were dressing in church like hoes and prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Then that got my attention. Wonderful. And from then on, I started listening to your videos. You keep listening. That was the first time I saw you. I must say you speak my language in all of your sermons. My question is, I live in P Patterson, New Jersey. I live in Patterson, New Jersey, and I was wondering if there is a branch of First Church close by. Yes, right here in Philadelphia. <laughs> All you got to do is come on, cross the bridge. We have a whole lot of New Jersey saints here. You come on from Patterson and come on here to Lindley Avenue and walk with the Word of God. All right. Next letter says, I found your broadcast on YouTube looking for gospel songs. I was doing this for years looking for gospel songs. I am 62 years old now. Soon we'll be 63 this year. Mm -hmm. I found your program last year in November, the year 2017. I cry with joy out to the Lord. My eyes are opened. I'm blessed still to be among the living. I used to wear pants and used to wear my covering outside without a covering over it. I've seen women in pants. I've seen just how I was looking and I said, oh my Lord. I was out in public looking like that. I felt bad now. I see myself in the mirror of other women. No more makeup, no more wigs, no more of any of falseness. Thank Jesus Christ for Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank God for that. Think of it now, that one clip, that one clip have changed so many people's minds. And what have happened, sinners and so-called church people are talking about this message. You may not like it, but you're talking about it. You may hate it, but you're arguing about it. Because what I'm dealing with is a subject of divine truth and moral ethics. Who would ever think we're living in a time where people cuss me out because I teach women to be dressed modest and decent so they don't look like church strippers. Good matter if you like, I'm going to pound the devil's head. Thank God until Jesus comes, if God be my helper. All right, Dan, come on. Thank Jesus Christ for Pastor Gino Jennings, she says. I've got to be rebaptized. She says I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right. Next letter, I've been transformed by understanding, this person says. To Pastor Gina Jennings of the entire family of Truth of God Church, mm -hmm. I want to take the time to thank you and allowing God to do a good work in you, which allowed you to be tool, to be tool used, to be revealed, and to be a teacher of teachers. I grew up as a non-denominational Christian, but somehow the ideology of a holy trinity crept in. Mm -hmm. It sounds great at first, but as you break it down, it makes sense, and suddenly that way of thinking seems foolish. Thank God for that. They don't, it not only does it seem foolish, it is foolish. Amen. All right. As it is not doctrinally sound and not supported, mm -hmm. I am practicing to keep my opinions silent and let the, word of God's scripture, let the word of God's scriptures be my language, yes. as you have learned to do so. However, the point to me writing to you is to gain more understanding. My question is, in regards to the upper room where the apostles gathered to receive the Holy Spirit All right. and receive power, now, before their meeting in the upper room, they were already demonstrating power by casting out demons, yes. healing the sick, yes. preaching the gospel, uh -huh. and Peter even walked on water. Yes. So, 
My question is, what power was received when the Holy Spirit came upon them that they didn't already receive from God? Very good question. Now, the Holy Ghost is the keeper, but when Jesus was among them, he kept them. The Holy Ghost wasn't in them when Jesus was walking the earth. The Holy Ghost was walking among them. The Holy Ghost is the power of God, the presence of God, or the keeping power of God. So while Jesus was among the apostles, he kept them, and he gave them power to do these things. While I was with them in the world, chapter in, verse, in the book of St. John, chapter 17, and we're at verse 12. And let's get where they rejoice, and Jesus told them, don't rejoice because the devil is subject unto you. Right. All right, read quick. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. You hear that? Jesus said, while I was with them, while he was with all his twelve, he kept them, watched over them, protected them. And the power that they received was the power of the Spirit to do the things that Jesus done. That's right. Jesus said to his apostles on one occasion, verily, verily, I say unto you, the work that I do shall ye do, and greater work or more work, because I'm going back to the Father, I meaning I'm going back to the Spirit. That's right. All right. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Uh, Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. Yeah. And none of them is lost. All right. And in the book of St. Luke, chapter 10. And we're starting at verse 19. What is it? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. Now listen. Look at Jesus. Behold. Behold, I give unto you give power. Give unto you authority. To tread on serpents. You see, the power that they had was authority. That's right. The Holy Ghost wasn't in them. It was just walking among them, tabernacling in the body. Understand who the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is God. For the Bible says God is a spirit. What kind of spirit is God? He is a Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, because there's only one spirit. Listen. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Yes. And over all the power of the enemy. Uh -huh. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Jesus gave them that while he was here. Now, Jesus told them, I got to go. Glory right. to God, I got to leave you. He said, if I go not away, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, won't come. But when he went away, he sent the Holy Ghost or the comforter. Or the power back. And that same power that he gave them to, so they could, so we can work with them while he was here. Now it had to stay among them. But when the comfort while has come, he's gone. Listen at this. Now in St. John chapter 15 and at verse 26. But, uh, but when the comforter is come. When the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, is come. Whom I will send unto you. Whom I will send. From, unto you from the father from the spirit even the spirit of truth even wait, wait, what is the comforter even the spirit of truth the comforter is the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father which come from god he shall testify of me so after jesus left now the holy ghost that was walking among them now i had to get in them but ye shall receive power what now in the book of acts chapter 1 and verse 8 listen at this but ye shall receive power you shall receive power after that after what after that after what happened after that the holy ghost has come upon you hallelujah you see that so when Jesus was walking here on earth, which was God manifest in the flesh, power was given to them to do work. But the Son of Man would leave. But the power they would need so they could keep functioning. That's right. So now the Holy Ghost that came in them was the same Holy Ghost that worked in them when Jesus was here. Not two different powers, not two different spirits, one spirit, one power. But when Jesus was here, the Holy Ghost didn't function in them in the form of speaking in tongues. Because they didn't need that function because Jesus was among them. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Glory to God, look at what he said. Now in the book of St. John, chapter 16. And Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you. It's necessary that I, for you, that I go, that away. I go away. Or if I go not away. If I don't go away, the comfort the will not Holy come unto you. won't come unto you. But if I depart, if I leave, I will send him un unto I'll you. I'll send him unto you. And when he has come, uh oh, and when he has come, when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Now you bear in mind, when Jesus was here in the flesh, he was reproving them. That's right. But in order for that reproof to keep going, the spirit had to keep doing it. So after Jesus went away from among the apostles, the spirit of reproof still had to remain. That's right. So the same spirit that was in Jesus got in the apostles, which is the Holy Ghost, and gave them the same power and same authority and same function. Just like Jesus was on the cross and he speaking in tongue. Eli, 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 Sabbatini, which meant, my God, my God, perhaps not forsaken me. And you had the Holy Ghost working the apostles, and they received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue on the day of Pentecost. All right, next letter. This letter says, Mr. Jennings. Yes. I heard your message about whores. I right? bet you did. <laughs> Women wear makeup and jewelry and so forth and so on. Yes. This is my challenge to you. Being that you always emphasize having Bible for something, mm -hmm. show me in any place in the Bible where anyone called a woman, quote unquote, a whore. Right. And, I will, and I will take that large red Bible that you have on your pulpit and I will eat it up. All right. 
Give me Second Kings. Give me Second Kings nine twenty two. He asked me to give him Bible where anybody called the woman a whore, and he said if I do this, he'll take this Bible and eat it up. All right. Second Kings chapter nine and at verse. 22. Follow me in your Bible, watcher. Second. Follow me in your Bible. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Alarm. 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 Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Give chapter and verse. Second Kings chapter 9 and we're at verse 22. And it came to pass. All right. Second Kings 9, 22. And it came to pass. When Joram saw Jehu. When Joram saw Jehu. That he said, is it peace, Jehu? Hmm. Joram said to Jehu, is it peace? And he answered, what peace? Jehu responded, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel. And our witchcrafts are many. Wait a minute. Do you hear what he said? So what peace? What peace? So long as the whoredom. So long as the whoredom of thy mother of your mama Jezebel. Jezebel. And her witchcrafts and her witchcraft. <laughs> Dinner is served. Dinner is served. Amen. Open up. Start eating. Jezebel was a whorish woman. Yeah. Hey Amen. Read that again. Still in 2 Kings chapter 9 and verse 22. You better start eating. Hey man, I want you to come here so I can put the camera on you. I'll be glad to rip up the very first page and stuff it down your throat. I want you to taste and see how good it is. Uh, <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, William. What is that? And it came to pass when Joe Ram saw Jehu. I don't know why these folks think we ain't got Bible for what we're preaching. All right. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? Yes. And he answered, What peace? What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother the Jezebel. Whoredom. Brother Jehu really tied the door, didn't he? Oh, yeah. So long as the whoredom of your mother Jezebel. And her witchcraft. And her witchcraft. Are so many. Are so many. All right, next letter. This letter says it's a biblical question. First off, I'd like to say thank you to God Almighty for leading me to where I can receive the truth. This question is not easy by any means. I studied the 66 books of the King James Version has to offer and realize that there's more of the truth that fills in the blanks the Catholics left out. In Mark chapter 9 verse 5, it states, Peter answering a question that was never mentioned. It's as a suggestion, suggestion to Jesus. Jesus was speaking with Elias and Moses. What were they speaking of for let's, Peter let's to answer back. with a suggestion to Jesus? What was what were they Moses speaking and Elijah talking to Jesus about up on the mountain, on the mountain. of transfiguration? All right. Now in the book of St. Luke chapter 9, and we'll start reading at verse 29. All right, turn your microphone so you can make sure it's off. All right. St. Luke chapter 9, we're starting at verse 29. All right. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Yeah. And his raiment was white and glistering. Yeah. And behold, they talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. Yes. Who appeared in glory and spake of his decease. Wait a minute. Moses and, and Elijah, Elijah who appeared in glory. In glory. And talking to Jesus. Right. And what did they talk to Jesus about? And spake of his decease. They talked to Jesus about his death that would be. Which he should accomplish. Which, at, which he should accomplish. At Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. Amen. So Moses and Elijah appeared up on the mountain, talked to Jesus about the death that would take place. That's what they appeared for. Right. You bear in mind, there were not two human beings that appeared. Because Moses been dead and was buried. And the prophet Elijah been translated that he should not see death. So the spirit of Moses and the spirit of Elijah appeared, and they talked to Jesus about his death. That should be accomplished. At Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. That's all the letters. All right. We thank God for that. We're going to dive into the Bible. We want to talk about how the church no longer have the fear of God. Joshua talks about that, I believe, in the 24th chapter, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Churches today, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends, and to my distinguished enemies, churches today don't fear God. Prosperity, money, women, notoriety, popularity, all that took the place of God. God had been dwindled down to a painting. Some little black or white Jesus hanging on the wall or hanging on the cross. So many Hebrew Israelites, they say, you know, all of them don't cuss me out, but a lot of them do, and I'm thankful for that. Some said, I really enjoy that man. But why is it that man just won't say Jesus is black? Jesus was a Nazarene. 
And of course, Nazareth, of course, people was of color. All right. Jesus came out of a region of color. What's the big deal? What do I care if he was black? I do know he wasn't a European. Yes, I do know he was not a European. He came from a region where people was of color like I am. But why I don't preach about that? Because his skin color was never a topic of interest to the apostles or the prophets. If Jesus was my complexion or Dan complexion, what would we get out of it? Hear me, hear me, human family. The black Jesus, his blackness don't mean nothing. You know what means something of importance about Jesus? His teaching and his life. Now to my Hebrew Israelite brothers, if you really believed in Jesus, how in the world can you be out on the street with such a foul cussing mouth calling passerbyers, MFs and SOBs? God don't have DAM attached to him. Am I right, I said? How can you see a white woman and a white brother walk by on one video? I think Tony Harbin put up and I'm glad he did. There were some so-called Hebrew Israelites and there was a white young lady came by and she disagreed with them. So one of the so-called Hebrew Israelites knocked her down like she was a man. You don't represent Christ, you represent the devil. That's of the devil. God ain't never tell black folk to go around and murder white people. And God ain't never tell white people that you are better than black people and that black people should be hung by you. So the Hebrew Israelites are nothing but Ku Klux Klan in reverse. You're just black Klansmen. Anytime, listen, you're no better than the Klan. You act like the Klan, you talk like the Klan, the same way the Ku Klux Klan and the skinheads are about black people and Jews, you are the same way about the white folk. So therefore, you are brothers to the Klan. Get that? Jacob said about Simeon and Levi. He said, Simeon and Levi are brothers, instruments of cruelty he said it's in their habitation so yes I know where you're gonna sit and talk about the Bible and just use MF 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 at will the Bible said from the same mouth proceeding blessing and cussing you Ku Klux Klan and skinheads you white bigots and you Hebrew Israelites you black bigots both of y'all are brothers your brothers. You clan men who talk about the blacks as niggas and you blacks that talk about the whites as crackers, you're both are brothers. Neither one of you, but listen, the white clan bigot says the only one gonna be in heaven is all white people. And if there's any black people up there, they're gonna be serving them. The Hebrew Israelites talk the same junk that only black folk going to be with the Lord and the whites are going to serve black as slaves. All of you are a bunch of bigots. I don't care if you don't like me. It doesn't faze me at all. You can make all the videos you want. I'm happy that you're advertising the truth of the gospel. I don't mind that, but it don't take back nothing I said. Anytime a so-called man represent Jesus and I take his bare hand and slap a woman down and the only reason why he slapped her down is because the shade of her skin is not like his. You ain't nothing but a good for nothing, low spineless black bigot. You skinheads, you clansmen, you think I'm going to be serving you in the kingdom? You got it wrong. Your whiteness don't mean nothing to God. And if your whiteness don't mean nothing to God, I don't give two cents how white you are. You must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll find the sheep and the lion laying together. All this bigot foolishness, white and black and yellow and red, and you weak, cheap, frail preachers. That's all you hear the Hebrew Israelites. We're going to kill Esau. 
Esau in is coming. Esau this, Esau that. You little fools out there and slow of heart, your black soul got to repent and go down in the name of Jesus Christ or you're going to be in hell with Esau. Right. Now, to my black brothers, look at your ignorance. Let me get it wrong before I deal with the apparel. Which one of you Hebrew Israelites are pure black? Am I right? Let's have a historical discussion. According to history, people of color was enslaved by weak, bigot white folk. I categorize it like that because all white brothers are not racist. Only them that are bigots endorse slavery. So, when our ancestors was captured, arrested, for being black, whatever name they originally had, they were stripped of their name, stripped of their culture, and stripped of their language. So if your name of was from some African origin, Mabunda, and yet your slave master last name was Brown, you took on the name of your slave master. And then the slave master took your wife, took your brother, took your aunt, took your daughters, took your grandmother and discharge his seed into the brown body. And Mapunda lost his name. All the blacks took on the name Brown and was the property of Brown. So now each child that would come from the women was mixed with seed from a white man. And this has been spread for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years until it's hard to find a full-blooded black man in America. So my Hebrew Israelite fellas, which one of you are all pure black? If you're going to hate white folk, you better hate yourself. Because your DNA, you have some white blood in that black temple. Proof that some of you got that white blood. Look how light you are. I know you may not like this, but what do I care? If you're going to say the white man is the devil only because he's white, you better include your DNA. Now, what then? Before you read that, let me address, because when I preached about the way those sisters should look. Many of the people, black men, wrote in and I know I've been called nigger so many times. Black men was calling me nigger. Some called me a coon. Called me an Uncle Tom because we preached that women should be dressed. I didn't mind it. But let's see, am I this nigger that you claim? Because the one that made the nigger was the slave master. Let's see, am I a nigger? Or you. Now, the slave master wanted to strip the clothes off the black female. And he wanted her to be a plaything. He wanted him for his amusement, for his property. And the slave master will share the woman or her daughter and lend her to other associates of his. So they would pass around mothers, daughters, niece, aunts, grandmother. The slave master didn't want you to have clothes on. The slave master would play music so the woman could strip for him, dance for him. And then as a reward, he may give her a little something. It's the father or the husband that when she would come back, he felt ashamed and would throw a, a blanket over her. Now, here I am, like the old father. Want to cover up our women. But here you are, 
Do it like the slave master. You want our women to remain naked? You want our women breasts to be out? You want our women backside showing? You want our women to show their thighs? And yet you call me a nigga. Will the real nigga stand up? I'm laboring to put clothes on you. And yet you black men call me a coon because you're too weak to tell your wife put clothes on. You're weak. Let's deal with this. I want three brothers. Go to the back there. Huey, you go. Get two other brothers with you. I got three images back there. Two other brothers go with Huey and pick it up from the bottom. Move the trees out the way. Pick the three images up from the bottom and set each one in the front. Don't uncover them. Don't uncover them. Just bring them out and pick it up from the bottom. We're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with this another way. We're going to deal with this in a way it never had been dealt with. I thank God for television because I want to tell you the vision and show it to you. Come on, brothers. Let's move quick, please. Let's bring it on out one by one. Take your time. Get it from the bottom. You let them get through here. You all right, Ellis. You all right. Let them come around. One by one. You're not going to have no excuse. Set that one over there. Right there. Right there. Turn it around a little bit. Set that one right there. Set that one right there. Keep your hand on the bottom. Turn it around so the feet is facing this way. All right. Just like that. You good. All right. You good. Thank you. Everybody all right? Yeah. Glory to God. Now, to my so-called Christian women and men who cuss me out, give me the book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. I want everybody to follow me in the Bible because I'm pretty sure. Now, I, I, I hope this go viral. I hope it does. All right, follow me in your Bible. First Timothy chapter 2, and we're at verse 9. Listen. In like manner also. Bible talking. In like manner also. That women. That who? Women. That women. Adorn themselves. Adorn themselves. In modest apparel. In modest apparel. With shame faces. Shame faces. And sobriety. What, what, what else? Not with broided listen, hair. Listen, listen good. Not, not with, with broided hair. Broided hair. Hair decoration. Or, or gold, gold, or pearls, or pearls, or costly array. Now, many of you have wrote me and said, makeup is not in the Bible. This is what you church folk look like. One of you brothers get that side for me, will you please? Quickly, please. Come on, brother. Set that over there. Set that over there. Two of you brothers uncover this one. Two of you brothers uncover this one, please. Take your time. Uh -uh, take your time. Take your time. I don't want you. Take your time. Pick that up down there. That's why you didn't take your time. You took the Christian wig off. Put it on. Now, you Christians, you have so-called Christian celebrities that look like this. You have some first lady in churches, pastor wives. You look like this. You let your children look like this. You let many of the mothers in the church look like this. You go to so-called Christian concerts and the women look like this. The Bible says. In like manner also. In like manner also. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is so modest about this? What is so modest? about this there was some women wrote me when they heard me preach against it and said my pastor don't say nothing i most certainly know he don't your pastor wants to see this yeah your pastor wants to see this yeah. because your pastor wants to go here yeah am i right i said talk to 
Miami. Give me Jeremiah. Yes. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Now for you that says makeup is not in the Bible. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 4. The fourth chapter. And at verse 30. Follow me in the Bible and verse 30. Oh, this is good. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 30. Yeah. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? You see, when you spoiled in these churches, you can look like this. Because the preacher preacher gets no sin. T.D. Jakes ain't gonna say nothing about this. Griffin Old Dollar ain't gonna say nothing about this. Joel Austin ain't gonna say nothing about this. Your bishop, he ain't gonna say nothing about this. No. When you up on the choir like this, your bishop looking at you. Am I right, I said? Amen. Yes, sir. And when thou art spoiled, when you are spoiled, what wilt thou do? What will you do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson. The Bible said you close yourself with crimson. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. What else? Though thou rinnest thy face with painting. Your face have what on it? Thou rinnest thy face with painting. You see it? The Bible says, though thou riddest thy face with painting, how do God feel about the way this looks? In vain. In what? In vain. What do they do in vain? Thou shalt make thyself fair. You think you look beautiful, but in God's eyes, your fair look is vanity. Vanity. This is what church has become to. You look on BET, the choirs look like this. Baptist folk, like this. Non-denominational, like this. Right. So-called apostolic, like this. Catholics, like this. Give me Leviticus 10, 10. In Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Listen now what the Bible says. That thou shalt put a difference. What did it say? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Turn Williams up. Make him louder. Yeah. Leviticus, is Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Leviticus 10, 10. I want all my viewers to get this, get this, get this. Call the ones that hate it and say, look at what that crazy Pastor Jennings got on television now. That's right. You know why some of you upset? Because this look like your mama. This look like your daughter. This look like your wife. This look like your second wife. This look like the pastor wife. And that's why you upset with me. Because we call a spade a spade. This is not the look of a Christian woman. No. Talk to me. Somebody posted a video of the excerpt of the clip of me preaching next to some gospel singer. She was dressed like this. Singing about Jesus. Talking about let's sing praises. A gospel singer dressed like this. And yet you men want to fight me. Women, you know why men cuss me out? Because I'm encouraging you to be modest? Because they want to keep playing with you like a slave master. They want you to look like a hoe. Go ahead. So they can make it rain. They want you to look like this. So they can keep driving and bumping their horn. They want your daughters to look like this. So that old hypocrite can take advantage of your daughter. They want your wife to look like this. So they can take advantage of your wife. So that's why they call me nigger. Call me what you want. But we're going to put clothes on our women. The Bible said that the women adorn themselves how? In modest apparel. Come here, Sister Bailey. Modest. Come here, Sister Bailey. She's the church photographer. Stand right here. Stand right here. This is modest. Come here, Sister Jennings. Come here quickly, please. This is modest. Modest is that. Now, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with it? How in the world you expect for a man to come at church and think about Jesus and you looking like a stripper? Talk to me. Bible says, let 
the women that women adorn themselves how? in modest apparel. Modest. Modest. Respectable. Presentable. You may be seated. Even some jobs got a dress code. Am I right, I said? That's right. So you on the Hip Hop Network, y'all heard y'all making fun of me and said, oh man, uh, he must really got a whole man for him to lash out. <laughs> All that weak talk. You see, your mothers, your daughters, your niece and aunts, they're like this. You women, you send your daughters out with something tight like this. And these old men looking at your 15, 17 year old daughter, how in the world can you criticize what I'm telling you? Listen, even if I'm not in church, this is morally wrong. Morally, it's wrong. Woman, the Bible says that women adorn themselves. Go back to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 4 and verse 30. Back in Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 30. Let's get the makeup. And when thou art spoiled. When you are spoiled. What wilt thou do? You see, your man, if I use that term, keep you this way. And you're spoiled. Spoiled. And you're upset because here I come stripping you out of it. Your man. And for some of you, your man is your pastor. Yeah. That's right. He wants you to dress like this. Right. On the choir. What's wrong with the way God made you? Sister, why you need this? You know your hair's not that color. Sister, why do you need this? You know God didn't make you that way. Why you don't think it's something wrong for you to be in church on a choir like this? Grandma with tights on like this. Men, your wives come out like this. They're all right, brothers. They come out like this. How you don't see nothing wrong? Listen. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? What will you do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson, and though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, and though thou rinnest thy face with painting, and in vain. Wait a minute. If they wear makeup, what profit is it? In vain. If they wear makeup, what profit is it? In vain. If they wear makeup, what profit is it? In vain. Vain. If they wear makeup, what profit is it? In vain. In vain what? Shalt thou make thyself fair. Leviticus 10 10. In Leviticus chapter 10 and at verse 10. And that ye may put difference. You can see him. Now, this is what the so-called Christian said. God said, he ain't looking at the outward. In the book of Samuel, when yeah. God sent the prophet down right. to, uh, to the house to look among Jesse's house, right. this is the scripture that they use. I want to get every scripture they got in mind so I can wreck it. They said, God said, come as you are. God ain't never said that. God did not say, come as you are. If you do come as you are, fine. But that don't mean for you to stay as you are. Listen at this in the book of Samuel. First Samuel chapter 16 and we're right at verse 7. Everybody all right? Samuel, first Samuel 16. And at verse 7. Begin at verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel. Look not on his countenance. Don't look on his countenance. Or on the height of his or statue. On the height of his statue. Because I have refused him. I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man see. The Lord don't see as man see. For man looketh on the outward appearance. Man look on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the heart. The preacher switched that around and said, God said he don't look at the outward. God ain't said that. No. Let me prove to you that God do look at the outward. Now, in that scripture, had nothing to do with clothing. No. That scripture had to do with came time that God wanted a king, a future king for Israel. Right. And when the sons of Jesse came by, Samuel immediately responded to the first son that he saw. Right. And God corrected him and let them know, no, 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 don't you look at the mm -hmm. statue or the height of the statue, none of that, because I have to fuse him. Right. And God was letting Samuel know that what I may get may be the one who you least expect. That's right. And the one they least expect was David. Right. Until David was out there keeping the sheep. And uh, Samuel asked, well, look, is all your sons here? Jesse said, no, there's one. And he's a young, rudy looking fella. He's out there keeping sheep. People didn't know the reason why David was keeping the sheep. It was dress rehearsal because keeping the sheep represented him being a king and the sheep represented him ruling over Israel. Are you getting what I'm telling you? All right, let's have it. Now in 1 Peter chapter 3 and at verse 3. This is for you. That says God don't look at the outward. You are liars. Right. Your pastor is a liar. And your husband. Amen. Listen to what I'm telling you. First Peter chapter 3 and at verse 3. What is it? Who's adorning? Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. God is saying he don't want you to adorn yourself outward in a certain manner. And what is that manner? Of plaiting the hair. Uh-oh. 
Our women can't plait their hair. And no braids, no plait. What else? And of wearing of gold. <laughs> no bling bling. Amen. And or of putting on of apparel. It's going to be a difference. The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he is what? <laughs> if this the way you dress when you was a sinner, you ain't got no business still dressing like this and you born again. Right. There got to be a difference. Difference. All right. Take that one off, brothers. Two brothers, please. Just take it off. Come on now. Just take it off. I want to get the men. Men. Because a lot of women was complaining that I just got them. Take this hoodie off of them. I don't, I don't need that. I don't, be careful. I don't want to take the whole hoodie off. Be careful. Take the hoodie off because what I want to focus on is what our sloppy men look like. Yes. Now to all. I know many of you will write me and say, you ain't got no Bible justify you doing that. Let's, see book, how, let's get some Bible. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19. And I want to get power and demonstration from Brother Paul. Right. Read that. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, and at verse 29. That's right. A man may be known by his look. A man may be known by his look. And one that has understanding by his countenance. Yes. When thou meetest him. When you meet him. A man's attire. A man's clothes and excessive laughter and excessive laughter and gait and gait show what he is. Now I want to demonstrate this. Paul said he demonstrated. Now you men, will you please explain? You men, will you please explain? Why do you want your filthy drawers exposed to the public and why are you walking with your pants down like you's a male whore? Am I right, man? Am I right, I say? so-called Christian performers up on a stage like this singing about Jesus like this preacher sons like this you know they had this trash reality show called the preachers preachers of LA and you see them like this you folks are no Christians what do this trash got to do with Jesus First Corinthians chapter 2. Give and chapter verse. First Corinthians chapter 2 and we're at verse 4. Listen. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, I, but in demonstration. I'm going to demonstrate this. Of the spirit of and the power. Of the spirit and of what? And of power. And of power. That your faith. That your belief. Should not stand in, in, the, what? Wisdom, in the wisdom of men. This is the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men says nothing wrong with looking like this. Right. The wisdom of men say you can be a Christian and look like this. Right. The wisdom of men say God ain't looking at your hour, you're looking at your heart. You see, you men that dress like this, your bishop said, it ain't nothing wrong because that gay man looking. Yeah. How is it you men feel so all right with your butt Go ahead. exposed to each other? Even a dog drop its tail to hide its private parts. Am I right, I said? Yeah. Even a dog yeah. put his tail down yeah. to hide his private parts. That's right. You was made in God's image. Look how disgraceful you became. You look like a male whore. You look like a male prostitute. You look like a male stripper. Yeah. Now you think about you from the hood. I'm from the hood. Yeah. A man that's a real male from the hood don't advertise his butt. You look gay. This is a sign that you're making a booty call. Now I know you.
you don't like this, and you know I don't care if you don't. Your father is like this. Grandfather, like this. Your son, like this. Father, like this. Wife, like this. Mother-in-law, like that. And you going to some church. Go ahead. Give me five brothers, starting from Damien to Marcus. All five of you brothers. Six of you brothers, come up. Stand from here over. Go over. Right, come on, close it in. Slide down a little bit more. I, I don't want you to block this strange being. Now, we are new creatures because we're in Christ. This is how we should look. Even if we don't have a suit on, our pants ain't got no business sagging. And we ain't got no business outside like this. That's right. Because we are of God. Right. And our Bible says, he that is of God will hear us. That's right. How in the world can a so-called Christian look like gang bangers? Look like hoodlums? Look like bank robbers? Look like a bunch of hoods wants to run a train on a girl. Why in the world? Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Someone said, no, I ain't going to pull it up. Why you ain't going to pull it up? Because anytime you men around each other like this, undoubtedly this is what you're doing. Call a spade a spade. You a real man? You gonna have this stuff upon you. But because you're not a real man, you satisfied with it right there. Now, you want the female to look at you here because you a trap. Because a real man don't advertise his productive organs. Go ahead, just a little bit. A holy man. Pull it up a little bit, just so the hoodlum and the so-called Christian rump is still exposed. The Christian, the godly brothers, should be modest. modest. Not like this just at church and then like that at home. Come out, away from church. You understand? You're not like at this at church. And then you like this when you leave church. Our sisters... It's not modest in church. And this is what some of you folks do. You go to church somewhat modest. But then you go to the club like this. Yeah. Now, if you claim you're the Christian, you ain't got no business in the club. Yeah. Bible says you cannot get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain. If you claim you represent Christ, why do you look like this, sister? This is not your hair. Who made you hate the color of your hair? Who made you hate the texture of your hair? Who made you hate the color of your skin and the shape of your lips and the shape of your nose? Who made you hate the complexion of your skin? The media made you hate yourself. So these center female performers on the stage looking like strippers, this trash have came in church. You got Jezebel in church. The whoredom of a woman. Give chapter and verse. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, and we're at verse 9. That's what? The whoredom of a woman. The whoredom of a woman. May be known in her haughty looks. May be known in her haughty looks. And eyelids. Hey, your eyelids is in the case. Look how fake you are. You hate yourself so bad, you get hair out of a box. You get eyelashes out of a box. You get new lips out of a box. Yeah. You get fingernails out of a box. Right. Toenails out of a box. God brought you from the man, not from no box. That's right. What driven you to hate yourself so bad until you were called this ugly Jezebel look? Yeah. Beautiful. beautiful. What's so beautiful? Give me Second Kings, the ninth chapter again, again, verse 22, and again, verse 30. That's right. This is the, the look of Jezebel. I want you to follow in your Bible. Second Kings chapter 9, starting at verse 22. All right, 
And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? Yes. And he answered, What peace? What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel. So long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel. And her witchcrafts are so many. All right, let's see what Jezebel looked like. Down in verse 30. Did you give chapter and verse? 2 Kings chapter 9 and verse 30. Let's get Jezebel look. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, and Jezebel heard of it. Jezebel heard the man of God was coming in town. And she painted her face. Wait a minute. When who? What's, what's the woman's name? Jezebel. What did she do? She painted her face. Makeup. Makeup. Right. Painted. Makeup. She did what? She painted her face. You see, the Bible don't use the word makeup because the word makeup did not exist right. back then. But God covered it face paint. It ain't nothing but face paint. Face paint. She painted what? And she painted her face. Painted. She did what? Painted her face. Do, do, do we got any more? Do we got any more makeup? Do we got any more? I wish you would have had some here. Yeah. She did what? She painted her face. That's you, so-called Christian. Now cuss me out. Yeah. Tell me the Bible was wrong. Right. The Bible was right. You're wrong. That's right. That's right. These other celebrities talking about it ain't no man should be teaching on what you should wear. That make the Bible a lie. That's right. The Bible said. And she painted her face. She did what? She painted her face. And she did what? She painted her face. Painted, painted. She did what? She painted her face. Who did it? Jezebel. Who? Jezebel. What did the preacher wives look like? She paint Jezebel. What did the preacher's daughters look like? Jezebel. First lady in the church? Jezebel. Women on the choir? Jezebel. Women on the organ? Jezebel. Women ushers? Jezebel. Women in so-called Christian concerts? Jezebel. Mothers in the church? Jezebel. Jezebel. Glory to God, glory to God. And she painted her face. She did what? She painted her face. Painted. Now. Painted. They have gotten so backward. The man is not only like this in the so-called Christian church. Now, Mr. Ricky Smiley. Go ahead. Mr. Ricky Smiley, I got your letter. I'll read it tomorrow on our telecast. But before I read it, here's a challenge to you, Grandma Jenkins or whatever you call yourself. The last weekend of July, give me the last dates of July quickly, please. The last Sunday of July, what date is that? July 29th? What is the last Sunday of July, please? July 29th. Mr. Smiley. I heard all that smack you're talking. Amen. All right. July 29th, Mr. Smalley. I challenge you to an open televised debate. Is it God's will for women to look like this? And is it God's will for you to look like this? Give me the Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 22. And at verse 5. Now, Mr. Smiley, Tyler Perry. Go ahead. All you fake Christians that hide under Jake's. Jake's can't protect you from what I'm preaching. Jake's can walk around all. If Jake's represent God, why won't he tell Tyler Perry to come out of your woman clothes? Yeah. Let's deal, deal with this with Bible. Bible, that's right. Hollywood ain't coming in here. Go ahead. Entertainment ain't coming in here. Yeah. The Bible says the Lord is in his holy temple. God church is 
supposed to be sacred. How in the world can a Christian man or Christian woman look and laugh at a man dressed like some woman Amen. and pay money, pay money to see it? You may say, well, it's my job. Anytime Hollywood can offer you money to dress like a woman, what else will you do for Hollywood? Hollywood is a big pimp. Amen. Any man that get dressed like a woman, you get paid. You have sold your manhood. Amen. You have let your creator down. You sold your manhood for money. He that get his riches. You took your manhood and threw it in the trash for money. A real man ain't putting on no dress. A real man ain't putting on no wig. A real man ain't wearing no lipstick. A real man ain't wearing no fingernail polish. A real man ain't wearing no dress. A real man ain't wearing no heels. Am I right, Isaac? Give me Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and at verse 5. Give chapter and verse again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and at verse 5. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. A woman should not be dressed so she look like a dude. Right. You should be able to look at a woman to tell the difference between her and her husband. Am I right, I said? What else? The, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What else? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Hold it. You brothers, Rob and Shay, come here quickly. Take this off. Can you get that off? Can you get it off? Don't take the arms off. I don't want the arms off. Come on, I need y'all to kind of move a little quick. And I need two sisters to please undo this. Come on, sisters, please. One of you, just come on and get up, please, and just undo this. Don't sit and look at me. Come do this. Come do it. Take the mess off. I want to show Go you ahead. what these men are doing. Go ahead. Don't look at me frowning. It ain't real. This what? It's twisted? It's a onesie? All right, all I, I want is the top off. That's all I need is the top off. You know why I want the top off? Because I want to correspond with what he's reading. Right. If you can't get it off, you've got any extra clothes upstairs? If you've got any extra clothes upstairs or, or some baptismal clothes, something, I'm going to demonstrate this until people get so mad they turn it off, they cuss, they kick the screen over. I don't matter. I'm going to manifest your folly today. Yeah, take your head off. Too. Put it on him for me. Read, Williams. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Keep reading. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Keep reading that part. The, neither, neither shall a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Keep reading. For, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Keep reading. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Tyler Perry. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Ricky Smiley. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Tyler Perry. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Ricky Smiley. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Tyler Perry. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Keep reading. Neither shall a man put on a woman's Tyler Perry. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Smiley. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Tyler Perry. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Amen. Y'all can take her away. Take her away. Don't take that away. Just one or two of you brothers help him, please. Just take the whole thing away. Just take it back. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now, Tyler Perry. Amen. Ricky cross dressing Smiley. How do you fellas manage to claim Jesus and you are an abomination? Abomination. Read the Bible. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so. Actors. All that do so. Entertainers. All that do so. They do it to get paid. All that do so. They do it to get a laugh. All that do so. What is it? Are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Ricky Smiley. Amen. You got so much talk. Face me like a man. Amen. Man up. Amen. 29th of July, I challenge you to see if you can live up to all what you said. Amen. Face me like a man. Yeah. You can bring Perry with you. You can bring Jake's with you. In fact, you can bring anybody with you. Amen. All I deal with is Bible. I, I just don't talk. You see, I'm a man. Yeah. 
when my children look at me, they don't think I'm their mama. Am I right, I said? Go ahead. Young men look up to these actors. And if they see these men getting dressed like women, the young men gonna want to do it. But you got this sick Hollywood generation that say ain't nothing wrong looking like this. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. This is abomination to who? Unto the Lord thy God. It's not an abomination to Ricky Smiley. It's not an abomination to Tyler Perry. And it's not an abomination to T.D. Jakes. No. No. Tyler Perry come out looking with this foolish look, Medea. Fake breasts. Fake hips. Lipstick. And then do all that cussing. cussing. And then go to Jake's shop, tell them about soap, tell them about. That's trash talk. Right. Thank the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's trash talk. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Bible says the Holy Ghost do not behave himself unseemly. How are you going to get dressed up like this and hakanava shot at the no? No. Fools make a mock at sin. What did the Bible say? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, and that verse 9. Oh, we're going to hit hard. Oh, yeah. You see, if I was preaching for money, I couldn't preach this. No way. I'm not rich, not wealthy, but we got a rich gospel. Amen. We preach what men are afraid to preach. We deal with what churches are afraid to deal with. And what are churches afraid to deal with? Is the reality of sin. Yes. You're scared to preach against sin. Yes. When you preach against sin, folks won't give money. That's right. We are preached against the wickedness of the world if you don't give a dime. Yes. Do you hear the Bible? Proverbs chapter 14 and that verse 9. Proverbs 14 and 9. Fools make a mock at sin. Listen, anytime you get dressed up like a woman and then people and you're doing it to crack jokes with the Bible, a man gets dressed like the woman is supposed to be singing gospel. Yeah. You're making a mockery at abomination. That's right. How is it you Christian people, so-called, can pay to see Ricky Smiley? Get dressed like a woman. Oh, Pastor Jim, that's entertainment. The Bible says Fools a fool a mock make mockery at sin. You don't take sin for what it is. That's right. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. death. Didn't it say so? That's right. What else did it say? Fools make a mock at sin, and but among the righteous there is favor. Now, Among the righteous there is favor. Now in Proverbs chapter 16 and at verse 2. Says what? All the ways of a man are clean. How? In his own eyes. Ricky Smiley, you don't see nothing wrong with looking like a woman. That's right. Are you supposed to be a man? That's right. All men. Yeah. Sinner. Or not. Or not. If Hollywood can make you like this, you have sold your manhood. Amen. You're an embarrassment to men. You're an embarrassment to children. You're an embarrassment to God. Right. Because God said he made man. In his image. All right, brothers, take that thing away, please. Come on, come on, let's take it away. Watch your head, watch your head, Williams. Your head fell off because that's what happened to society. Yeah. The Bible said the whole head is sick. Is that all right? Amen. And that ye may put difference. Leviticus 10, 10 says. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy. And, and between unclean and clean. Let's get if any man be in Christ quickly. Let me close out there. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Probably in the Bible, viewers, viewers, I know many of you is mad, and you actually thought by, by all this cussing. Hundreds of thousands of people cussing me out. And I guess who we need to put this excerpt up. You thought you can pressure me for some reason. One man wrote me and said, how do you feel being under so much heat? <laughs> heat. <laughs> heat. Heat. <laughs> don't you know the form of the fourth one that was in the fire looked like the son of God? I don't feel no heat. I don't feel no heat. Hallelujah. God took the flame out of the heat. Hallelujah. Truth of God don't feel no heat. Oh, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go and say God. There's no heat. Hallelujah. 
The world is talking about this message. The world is talking about this message. This, this message. Even if you don't agree with it. Even if you don't like it. It got the sinner and a so-called Christian arguing with each other about this message. You're doing what God wants you to do. Yeah. I'm going to go with God. No pressure here. No heat here. The only heat we got is the Holy Ghost. John said, one come after me. Who shall do it? Who shall baptize you? With the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Go to God. That's the only heat we have. Hallelujah. That's the only heat we have. The Holy Ghost. You sinners and news outlets. You don't got what it takes to put heat on us. Go ahead. You ain't got what it takes to put pressure on us. God got the church hedged in yeah. like he hedged in Job. Yeah. You actually thought by your ranting and raving that would make us get depressed and come back and say, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Yes, I said. You look like organ playing hoes, drum playing hoes, choir singing hoes, church going hoes. Yes, I said it. And I say it again. Hallelujah. You look like horse. That's exactly what you look like. We ain't taking it back. says my word will not return unto me void we ain't taking it back it's time for the church to clean up God church and the church of men are not the same they claim you saved drinking smoking gambling partying looking like prostitutes and strippers hands pants hanging down and you represent Christ? No, you represent club, you represent party, you represent strippers, you represent prostitution, and you represent pimping. Go ahead. Go ahead. If any man... 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Give chapter and verse again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. It's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you feel new. New. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good feeling. Hallelujah. Don't smoke no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't party no Hallelujah. more. Hallelujah. Don't Hallelujah. drink no more. Hallelujah. 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 No more. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
may break my bones, but names shall never hurt. I don't care about your name. No. You can call me nigga, coon, handkerchief head. That's all well and good. When you're done, repent. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. One of you. Every in the of name you. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You must receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. You must. Hallelujah. This is the Holy Ghost filled church. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. 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 Only the Holy Ghost can arouse that devil in a man. Yeah. And make them crowd around the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. When the apostles was here, the Holy Ghost upset the people so they said we gotta stop these men so they turned the world yeah. upside down that's right hallelujah holiness is turning the world hallelujah. upside down it's turning the world upside down hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 that's what it's hallelujah Go ahead, go ahead. This message, this message has started a revolution, bringing about change. Men, women, boys, girls, want to get it right. Black, white, brown, yellow. Black folk mad with me because they see white folk in here. Hallelujah. White folk wrote me and said, why is there so many blacks? Well, you come on in here and subtract from the number. Of the Lord's house. Of the Lord's house. Shall be established. Shall be established. In the top. Of the mountain. Of the mountain. And exalted. And shall be exalted. Above the hills. Who's coming? And all nations. All black nations. All nations. Just all black nations. All nations. Just all white nations. All nations. God want all nations to do what? Shall flow unto it. All nations. Yeah. And when the nations come, and, what are they going to say? And many people. Many people. Shall go and say, come ye. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let us go up. Let's go up. Hallelujah. To the mountain of the Lord. To the mountain of the Lord. House. To the house of the God of Jacob. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us. He will teach us. Of his ways. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. he said he will teach us of, of his, his ways. ways. And when you learn God's ways, it ain't just white folk. No. When you learn God's ways, it ain't just black folk. No. It's for all nations. All nations. Hallelujah. All right, you that are here. Time for you to break up your folly rap. You might as well get ready to lay down on your vanity. Yeah. I believe, I want to close out with Genesis, the strange gods. If I'm correct, I believe the 35th chapter of Genesis, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And again about the second verse. Amen. Get there quickly. Everybody all right? Genesis chapter 35, and we'll start at verse 2. Mm -hmm. Then Jacob said unto his household, what? and to all that were with him, Jacob said to his household, everybody that was with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you. Put away the strange gods that are among you. Now, listen closely. And Put be, away the strange gods that are among you. And be clean. Be what? And be clean. Be clean. And change your garments. And change your clothes. And let us go arise. What, now, what was the strange gods that they pulled off? Read on. And let us arise and go to Bethel. Yes. And I will make there an altar unto God. Yes. Who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Yes. At verse 4. All right. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand. What was it? And all their earrings which were in their ears. What was the jewelry called? Strange gods. And what did they do? Which were in their hand. What did they take off? And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand. And? And all their earrings. And? Which were in their ears. And? And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. Get them strange gods off your body. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Pull off them strange gods. Hallelujah. Your jewelry is strange gods. Strange gods. Paul says only one God. Repent. Everybody got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and leave your religion. Yes. You got to leave your religion. Yeah. You don't need to get baptized and stay in that fake religion you're in. You're still going to go to hell even if you're baptized right. That's right. Repent and be baptized. Christ. Every one of you. You got to hear? That goes for you too. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now if there's anybody here that want to get right with God, not get right with Pastor Jennings, 
get right with God and get your sins washed away. Stand on your feet. If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. Anyone? We got one? Wonderful. You that are standing, we got two. You that are standing, you see where they're standing back there? Go right back there where they are. Take them down in the name of Jesus Christ. 